And you know what? Wiggly, he's got to get a little bit of redemption. See if he can come back and swing for the fence as well as Oh, Kaio went head first over the falls on the first wave of this event. So he's looking for some of his own out there on this one. Yeah, nervous times for, for Wiggly Dantes. But priority being issued at the start of the heat. Kaio belly blowing up there. Of course, that new rule coming into play after the Billabong Pro Tahiti and uh, Wiggly. This is going to scrap around on the inside now. Looking to get things started. It won't be a huge score, but he'll plant the floater to finish that right off. Finding separation on this wave where he actually gets himself a little tiny tube and a small one. But I think the key factor here is that he's separated himself about 200 yards down the beach by doing that. So maybe there's a, and what kind of damage to do with that. So it's, it's an interesting one. Well, here we go. Kaya taking off deep in the barrel, too deep. On this one, 20 minutes to go. That's his first shot at a decent number. And it's going uh, to be a low one. Just a throwaway. Wiggly having a look at this one. It almost slurped him over the falls. A long and prosperous championship tour career. Meanwhile, out the back, Wiggly. A late drop into this one. For a moment there, it looked like he was going to wrestle that foam ball and find the exit. But he's going to gut fire. Went out a little bit. Right now, though, we're watching Kyle Belly. Trying to tackle a monster A-frame out here at Super Chubos. And he goes down hard. You actually get down the face. And right here, he's, he's right where the wave is cupping. So it's really hard to get into that from that position. And you see him just getting launched. And, and what, what happened there is he was trying to get underneath it. And as that wave draws up off the sandbar and all that water starts sucking up the face, you have to find yourself... While we're at the break. Wiggly picked off this one, Strider. Yeah, he, he seems to be struggling a bit out there at the moment. He, he got a little tube time here. But you can see how he had to come in and almost redirect himself as he dropped in to try and stall and get a, and get a little pipe out of it. Nine and a half minutes to go. As we see Kayo opting for an insider, this one has a good line to it. He's still rolling through this wave. But now he gets chewed up by the foam ball. Yeah, he went Mark Cunningham on it. Wiggly Dantes right behind him. Has some speed, goes looking for a doggy door, tries to punch his way through the curtain. Unable to do it. Situations where surfers have been slammed. The great entry into this wave, grabs the rail, puts his body into it, and then gets a little pump right there, double whip on the, on the hip movement, and then just tries to find the doggy door. But all that water coming down on your shoulders like that, like he almost had, he saw his board pop up again, so he was still there as he exited, but... I just can't find him, and um, uh, just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sad, and uh, it's probably not good for, uh, for how I'm looking in the requalification, so... In these earlier round heats, that's the first round two loss he's had all season, though, so he's still in a pretty good position, as we see a replay of Wiggly Dantes trying to get himself into another average-sized barrel right behind him, Kyle Belly picking off a jam. Yeah, that was great positioning for Kyle, huh? Just finding what he needed. Josh Kirk almost saying that he's going to uh, retire at the end of the season if he doesn't make the tour. He's still in a pretty good spot on the QS to make a charge there. And obviously still alive in this contest. Right now, though, Wiggly Dantes with a sweet line through the barrel, but no exit on this one. Four and a half minutes to go. Jeremy. Amazing thing. Here's Wiggly's wave. Dropped in. Beautiful line. Uh, the wave just ran off him, on him on the end there and just had that white water on the face again and did not let him out. So too much mind set on it and not letting it just go. Here he goes now, chasing down that lead, netting a 5.8. He's going to get out of there, though. I think a good start to the season, though, has helped Wiggly a, a lot in the past. But looks like Kyle is going to get a really nice-looking wave right to him. Well positioned, nice and deep, grabs that rail, tucks in. Puts a hand on the face of the wave to help find his way through to the exit. Throws down a little cutback, trying to just get rid of a 1.13 at the moment to extend. Brett Wiggly going, oh, look at that. And then he comes in and he finds a wave like this just by sticking over there to where he was on the main peak. And, and he did really well with it. He's dropped in, dragged, put the body in, the hand forward. Comes out with a nice cut back into the bowl. So I like it. I, I think, you know, he's, he's finding flow. Underneath it, too. That's where you want to be. That's where you have to take off 
right behind it and underneath it. And it, it's, it's one of those things that I talked to Frederico about it and, and Richard Marsh is you have to be behind this wave. He does have pipeline in his back pocket though. He surfs really well out there and maybe he can have a big charge for the final event of the year, the bonsai. Well, the bummer for Wiggly is there's so many surfers uh, above him on the, the leaderboard just inside the top 20 even that are still alive in this draw. So they're going to be putting some more distance between him 